So you've just come upon a bit of money. Maybe you made it big on Bitcoin or won First Division Lotto, or maybe you made the money the same way most wealthy New Zealanders did last year, and you owned and sold property in Auckland, Wellington, or Tauranga. Now you've got a cool money pile floating around in the bank. It's time to upgrade and you wanna go large, eight figure large. What can you get for $10 million and what do you need to show the bank to be able to get a mortgage? Stick around until the end of the video and I'll also show you how a $10 million home compares to the same priced house or apartment in the US. Before we get started, don't forget to click on the like button and hit subscribe. All of the ad revenue that we receive from YouTube is donated to local New Zealand charities. So just watching this video not only educates you, but helps us help those charities. Let's get into it. If you don't want to buy a farm, you're probably going to look to Auckland for your $10 million home. And even then, there are surprisingly few of them, especially once you've removed developer sites and commercial residential hybrid properties. Let's grab one at random to see how we could purchase the property. 32 Ronaki Road, Mission Bay is a five bedroom, four bathroom property with 645 square meters of floor space and over 2000 square meters of land. And with an approximate price of $10 million is exactly what you're looking for. Let's get the easy bit out of the way first. How much deposit do you need? As we know, banks are able to lend up to 90% on a property that you will live in, known as an owner-occupied property. And we're going to say for this scenario that you're not going to rent this property out. But banks don't like lending up to 90% on what they determine to be luxury properties. And in Auckland, that threshold is $3.75 million. At almost three times that price, you're unlikely to be able to borrow more than 70% or $7 million on this property. Your required deposit for this home is therefore $3 million. Let's hope you won the Powerball and not just first division on Lotto. The reason banks don't like lending to a high LVR on luxury properties is fairly simple. If you don't pay the mortgage, the bank eventually needs to sell the property, called a mortgagee sale. Their main goal is to recoup their mortgage, so they need to be able to get more than they have lent on the property. The market for a $10 million property would easily be described as thin. These properties tend to be viewed by appointment only for fairly obvious reasons. So in the event of a mortgagee sale, the bank is likely to find someone to buy it for the comparatively bargain price of $7 million, but much less likely to find someone with $9 million. Now for the harder question, what sort of income do you need to be able to afford a $7 million mortgage? Well, we know that banks test your affordability at 7% over 30 years. In other words, if interest rates go to 7%, could you plausibly still afford your mortgage? A $7 million mortgage at 7% per annum over 30 years is $46,578 per month or around $560,000 per annum. And to give you an idea of how thin the market is for luxury properties, we struggled to find a mortgage calculator that could calculate those repayments with most only going to two or $3 million of lending. Now, in reality, your mortgage payments will be much lower. Well, comparatively lower. Fixed for five years at 5%, you could get the payments down to $450,000 per annum or $110,000 less than the bank is assessing you at. But for your mortgage, the bank will always assess the higher rate currently at around 7%. So we'll have to stay with that. We haven't taken into account day-to-day -day expenses yet either. So let's take a look at how you could spend your money. The bank assumes a typical adult couple spends around $1,500 to $1,800 per month. And a couple with two children, they might spend around $2,300. Let's assume a couple that wants a house of this size have a couple of children we could assume their annual expenses are a minimum of $28,000 per annum. Except that we can't. In no world, in no reality, does a bank believe that a couple with two children who are in the market for a $10 million property live on a mega budget of $28,000 per year. The upkeep and maintenance of the home alone will cost you that with that fresh ocean air eroding your paintwork at a steady pace. Not to mention the cost of electricity to heat 645 square meters of house and a reasonably sized lap pool. In fact, it's likely that the bank will attribute an assumed cost of living to you, with my guess being around $100,000 per annum. You can try telling them that you will be canceling your gym membership as a result of the purchase, but it will likely fall on deaf ears. 
Before we do a final tally, let's have a look overseas to see what we can get for 10 million New Zealand dollars. In Gold Beach, Oregon, you can purchase a five bedroom mansion, which is a little larger than our Auckland residence at 9,301 square feet or 864 square meters. That house, however, is sitting on 34 acres of land, far exceeding the half acre you've bought in Auckland. Oregon, as we know, is a little off the beaten track, so let's look at something a little more central city. In Florida, for $10 million, you can purchase a, wait for it, two bedroom and two and a half bathroom apartment, measuring just 260 square meters, or almost 40% of the size of the house in Auckland. For this price, you can spend your twilight years watching as the cruise ships sail in and out of the harbor on your ridiculously small balcony. And for this price though, you do get a private elevator, a 12 acre resort style gardens in the apartment complex and the freedom to wear your Trump 2024 badge wherever you like. But back to Auckland, what do we know? You've got $100,000 of living expenses and $560,000 of proposed interest expenses for a grand total of $660,000. But what have we forgotten? That's right, income tax. In order to have a net income of $660,000 and given the majority of your income will be taxed at 39%, you're going to need a total household income of about $1.081 million. Call it $1.1 million for rounding. What's another $19,000 between friends? So if you've got a $3 million deposit and a total household income of $1.1 million or so, you are in the running for this property. If you don't, then be sure to Google Mortgage Lab Bank of Mum and Dad to find out how your parents can give you a leg up onto the eight-figure property ladder. I'm Rupert Goff. Thanks for watching.